In this video, I'd like to cover the essential aspects of Kumu that you would need to complete the exercises for the Certified System Thinker exercises if you choose to use Kumu to do them. Remember that I said that you can use to choose to use Kumu or Insight Maker, or you can do some of, some in each. It depends. So once you uh, go to kumu.io slash sign up and get your username and password for your account, go ahead and log in. Once you log in, it'll take you to your dashboard. Tell it you want to create a new project, and I'm going to create called one just testing, just to create a something, which takes me to this environment. And it usually initially opens with this video, which the first time you're here, it's interesting to watch, and then it's annoying. So you end up in this environment. On the right is the canvas where you create your map, and on the left is what's called the profile page. This is the profile page for the entire map. And every entity that you create in Kumu has its own profile page, whether it's an element, a connection, or a loop. We'll talk about loops in a minute. To create an element, you click here and call it Tom. I'm, of course, I'm going to create Tom and Jerry just like I did in Insight Maker. Now, you can continue to create elements here by simply clicking Add Element, but it's a much shorter way to do it, which I would recommend. Is if you, if you simply hold down the Alt key, mouse over an element, and then drag off of it, it will tell you it will create a new uh, element for you. So now I have Tom and Jerry, and with a connection between them, but there's no arrow on it. So the the default in this environment is that the elements are floating, which is probably not what you want if you're going to create um, relationship maps. It gets a little annoying with things floating around all the time. So that when you get in here, it's probably better if you come over here and set the default so that new elements that you create are fixed and the connections are directed. And that way, that when you create new connections, they will actually have a direction to them as opposed to being directionless. This way, oh, and then as far as the situation for them floating, when you create new ones in the future, they will be pinned so they will stay wherever you put them. And then you can alter the curvature of this line. If you select an item, you can pin it or unpin it with this option down here. And if you select a connection, you can change the direction of it. You can make it undirected or reverse it. You can make it go the other way, or you can make it go this way. So once you create that, notice that this is called Jerry. And here's the profile page for Jerry. Here's the profile page for Tom. And you can type a description in here. There are other things associated with the profile page, but you don't need to know any of them at this point. For the connection, the default for the connection is labeled as a connection from and to, though you can change that and put a label on it. And if you label it anything other than the default, the label then shows up. So um, this is a single entity. Now, to, to do loops, there's a couple of options. You can go ahead and select Perspective and go to Decorate Connections. And I can, well, sorry, let me back up a little bit. The connection, I can tell it that it is a plus, and it will put a plus sign on it. Personally, I said that I don't care for the plus and minus options. You can use them if you want to. I pre prefer to make them red and blue, so that what I will then do is come down here, select this, I will go, no, I will go to perspective. I tell it I want to decorate connections, and I will say that I want to generate for the connection type is plus. I want to change the color to blue. So I then have blue connections. And if I create another connection here, 
and, and tell it that this connection is a minus. And then go to the perspective and tell it that I want to decorate the custom connection where the connection type is minus. And I want to change the color of that to red then it's red. So I now have blue and red. And I can also go back to here and select this and say that I want to change the, the size and make this 6. And I can change this and make the size of this one 6 also. So they're a little easier to see. So now I've created two elements and the connections between them. I could also come in here and say decorate the elements, change the size of them and make them 20 just so that they're easier to see. The last part of this that, that you, oh, you can select a, a connection here and you can move it to somewhere else. You can select the other end and move it to somewhere else. If you select an item and hit delete it will get rid of it. To do the loop labels it's real easy. Select a connection, hold down the shift key, select any other connections that are part of the loop in this loop adds shows up and you can then label it B1 whatever you want to label it. So it then becomes uh, a, a loop. Now notice that it's selected it has its own profile page so that you could use this profile page to describe this entire loop as opposed to describing the individual pieces. Now, so depending upon what aspect of it you select, you have the profile page. Now notice that when you mouse, when you mouse over this, the loop itself, the elements of the loop, oh yes, if I select this, it selects all the elements of the loop. If I go ahead and do another piece on here and call this something else. So I've created another piece and I tell it that this is also positive. See, once I define them, I don't have to define them again. And tell it that this is also a minus. So I have another loop here and I can now say that this piece plus this piece plus this piece is another balancing loop. So I have a label. Let me select this. All right, let me get a hold of the label. Move the label down there. So now I have this balancing loop and this balancing loop. And if I mouse over this, if I select this, it's, hold on. Hold on. If I select, if I mouse over this in the right place, it highlights that balancing loop so I can tell what is part of that loop. And if I mouse over this in the right place, it should go ahead and highlight that part and dim the rest of it so it's easy to tell what's part of this balancing loop. So between the two of them, you go ahead and you could also select this and hide that part or click and hold in the background and it'll bring it all back. Or you could click here and it will hide all the rest of it and just show this part. So that's really, that's all you need to, to, that's all you need to know about Kumu to be able to develop the relationship models to satisfy the requirements for the Certified Systems Thinker course. So if you have any questions about what it, if there's anything that I left out that you think that you absolutely need, just go ahead and leave a post a question to this lecture and I will answer the question and update the video as appropriate so that you in fact have all the things you need if you want to create the exercises for this course in Kumu. So 
Take care, and I'll see you in another video soon. Bye.